So this is a simplified efficiency plot from the dyno results that I've been collecting. So it's similar to the plots that we've been looking at so far, except we don't have any of the uh, individual data points uh, from the throttle positions. This just shows the zones of efficiency and uh, where they are. And each, each of these color bands uh, represents a difference in 10%. Uh, 10 uh, efficiency on the motor. We have the same prop lineup uh, that we did in the previous test where we've got our our uh, kind of medium and heavy three inch and then uh, some small th uh, three and two inch props down at the very bottom. And the motor we're starting with here is the Tornado T13600 kV. So you've seen what they can kind of do looking at just the 100% throttle uh, where our, you know, our peak thrust uh, we expect might end up. But we've talked a bit previously about the sweet spot uh, for motor efficiency, the loading at which the motor gives the best um, the best power output uh, for the electrical power you put into it. So you can really clearly see how these bands uh, point down and kind of form a little arrow shape down in there. And this middle spot here, where we have the highest efficiency that we're getting, is the spot that we want to shoot for. And it's also important to keep in mind uh, about prop unloading. These are all static uh, test results. And so your prop loading in the air is going to be a dynamic value. For instance, when you're recovering from a dive, you might see static, you might see static values or possibly even higher than static values uh, in, in uh, motor load. But when you're doing a punch out or in fast forward speed, you have a significant amount of unloading. So we can kind of consider this to be kind of the top uh, or at least close to the top of the uh, torque requirement of the prop. And the actual zone that we're going to use in flight is actually going to be uh, below this to some point. So if we're right here, just crossing right through the middle of the efficiency zone, we're actually going to be using kind of a lower, uh, uh, lower section of this overall. We're gonna be kind of bouncing up and down um, in this area. And so these slightly lower loaded uh, lower prop loadings here, you know, here at lower throttle, where the, the higher loading is actually going to keep us in this uh, slightly, this higher efficiency band. If we had a lower loaded prop, prop unloading is actually going to push us into lower efficiency uh, sections of the motor, just because of where these efficiency bands uh, happen to fall. And you can also see that putting too light a prop on the motor really doesn't do you a ton of favors. Uh, this little two inch prop is, is very, very light load, but it's also we're down in some of the lowest efficiency regions on the motor. So just having a very light prop on the motor is not gonna mean you're gonna get efficient power delivery. But overall, you'd have to say that this uh, Tornado T13600 looks like it's fairly suited for all of the loads that we might throw at it. We're just about smack in the middle of our efficiency band, our sweet spot uh, right there. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have slightly higher loading, um, and we're not near so near to the bottom uh, that we're going to be drastically falling out of it. So let's step down the line slightly and compare it against the RCX 1407. This is the older motor design. And you can see how the sweet spot moves uh, dramatically between these two motors. So this is the Tornado and this is the RCX. This is the older motor design. You'll notice that the efficiency of the Tornado is actually a lot better in a lot of places. This is all uh, blue band efficiency here on the Tornado T1 and on the RCX we're already getting down into red and pink. In terms of hitting the sweet spot, this one is looking better on the lighter loads on these three inch props. The heavier one is definitely starting to duck out of our um, efficient zone, um, although prop unloading is going to push it back into it. Um, a much better uh, prop choice for this motor would be this yellow and black trace, which are the Rotor X3044 and the uh, Racecraft 3076, Could, because we're just missing the top of that highest efficiency uh, band there in the middle. So prop unloading is going to push us down into the middle of it. And when we're heavily loaded, we're still not that far off of it where the uh, much heavier load of the uh, Raystar 3035 uh, is going to leave us outside of that uh, peak efficiency zone a lot more of the time. And even though this is a uh, slightly weaker motor, it isn't helping us any on the super light uh, props. So the three, the 
three inch by blades and the two inch uh, props and stuff really aren't helped a lot by that efficiency zone uh, shrinking and coming down. We're still fairly well out of the efficiency band on all of these really light loads. So if we compare this down to the Emacs 1306, we see a much larger zone uh, of peak efficiency there in the middle. So this is the RCX 1407, and this is the Emacs. You can see the difference in peak thrust, uh, peak power at 100% throttle that we saw looking at the other chart. Um, but this again has a much bigger, healthier, uh, efficient zone there in the middle. And basically all of these normal uh, five millimeter, three inch props are pretty comfortably within it. You might also note that these uh, efficiency zones are fairly large. And if we compare it to the Tornado T1, uh, the efficiency overall of it is pretty close. Uh, the Emacs does look like it hits ever so slightly right along the path of uh, the torque curves of these props uh, compared to the Tornado T1. Uh, we're carrying a little lower efficiency for a little longer on the Tornado, where a lower throttle will be getting just higher up into the efficiency range of the motor on the, sl on the uh, smaller uh, Emacs motor. But in terms of the, uh, the size and placement of each of these bands, they're pretty similar. And if we compare now to the DYS 1306, we see a huge drop in efficiency overall. This is again the older design similar to that RCX and uh, the bands on that are fairly similar as well. The RCX handling uh, our peak zone uh, a lot better there, but the differences in efficiency between the Emacs 1306 and the DYS 1306 are pretty dramatic. You can see that the heavier loaded props are now getting definitely outside of that zone of peak efficiency. And perhaps the lightest load props uh, in the test uh, might push down into there, but this motor is definitely gonna be preferring a slightly lighter load as it just doesn't have the, uh, the torque to, um, to push the heavier loads. Uh, on it. Even still, the very, very light loads, the unrealistically light loads for this motor are still, well, unrealistically light, except for uh, perhaps the, the 25, 35 by four, uh, which happens to have a little heavier loading. Uh, you know, you can kind of count on this curve going out through there and that'll probably pass through the middle of the efficiency band on this motor uh, the 3020 by blade might just skirt off on the the bottom of it if we assume um, that that's going to go but uh, we're still pretty far out of where we really want to be up here in the uh, power band so let's step back to the Tornado T1 and compare this going up, looking at the RCX 1707. So this is the larger stator with an older design. And you can actually see at lower RPM ranges in here, uh, the 1707 actually hurts for efficiency compared to the uh, Tornado T1. We're hitting higher efficiency earlier on in our torque curve uh, compared to the RCX 1707. But the sweet spot does look very large, and we have a, an even higher section of uh, efficiency just starting to peek through on the chart there as well. While our mid and low throttle efficiency is going to be lower, uh, the sweet spot on the high end is certainly a lot larger on this 1707. Uh, and there's no problem with any of the, even the heavy uh, three inch tri-blade load uh, all of them are uh, fairly well suited, uh, well matched uh, to this uh, particular motor. And if we kind of, again, assume where like a four inch um, prop load is going to be, uh, this seems like a, a fairly decent motor uh, for going on to that because that's anything that's gonna skirt right above this efficiency band with prop unloading is gonna bounce down into it. And to compare the efficiency of this with the top of the lineup, the Tornado 4100 KV, the efficiency bands are actually fairly similar. On the low range, uh, we seem to be hitting pretty much the same bands in efficiency on the way up. And it has a fairly wide sweet spot. We seem to be hitting loads a little heavier uh, than it might want. Our, our area of peak efficiency seems to be a little lower down here. We're not off into the red and, and pink on this. Um, 
but you can definitely get a feeling that the 1707 has more uh, potential for efficiency uh, than the uh, the 1407 of the Tornado T1. So I would say a similar thing there. Yes, yeah. higher KV, uh, increasing the loading on it, we're ending up in a zone that's uh, fairly well matched for all of these uh, middle and high load three inch props. But you probably wouldn't want to run this one uh, with a heavy four inch um, because that's going to push you way out above the uh, kind of sweet spot for efficiency on it. And something like the 1707, perhaps with a more modern design, uh, is going to have a lot better efficiency and a lot more power at uh, torque loads even higher than the, uh, the heavy three inch that we've got in our, uh, our lineup here. So it's a big complicated thing uh, looking at both efficiency and uh, actually peak thrust performance that you might get out of the motor. Um, but hopefully this gives a, a little more of a visual look at uh, how the performance of a prop and the performance of a motor can complement each other, where you can have a prop that uh, really matches well with a motor's performance and can give you the peak possible performance out of that motor. And where running a prop that's either too heavy or too light can sacrifice efficiency, even though you're still getting high thrust numbers out of it. Now, certainly you don't have to aim uh, for that area of peak efficiency on the motor. You can run the motor at high loads at low efficiency, but while you're choosing a powertrain, if you can find a match that will um, match up with the prop loading that you're you're looking for, then certainly you have nothing to lose by finding one that does. Because all that means is you're gonna get the same thrust and same performance out of the motor, but at the end of the day, you're gonna puff your battery less. And also I think a good example of the varied performance that you can get out of different motors. Just because a motor has a larger stator does not mean that it's overall going to make more power or be more efficient than a smaller motor with a different design. I would say that uh, the larger stator motor definitely has more potential, but if the overall design of the motor uh, doesn't come together, you may be wasting a lot of that potential. 